Welcome to another one of our webinars here uh, brought to you by AIM Sports. This is uh, this is webinar number 157 that we've been doing and uh, uh, always such a great, great amount of fun. We've got people that join us from all over the world live and, um, uh, and, then, and then thousands of viewers later on, on YouTube. Um, uh, just kind of a, the normal thing if you uh, if you're here locally with us live as we're doing this, if you have some questions, make sure you add the questions into the question and answer box. And we will, uh, I can't follow the, the chat box, uh, a lot of stuff happening there. But if you uh, put, put a question that is something to do with today's topic into the question and answer, we will try to get at it. And uh, those of you that are watching later uh, on, on YouTube, uh, all the links that we talk about, uh, 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 information that we may have will always be down into the description box of the YouTube um, uh, video. So if you open that up, hit the little more button where you can see more of it. Uh, everything we talk about here today that was linked or was provided to the folks here live will be provided to you there. So if you hear us talk about something, just jump down in there and you'll have it there as well. Okay, perfect. What we're going to talk about today is is Race Studio 3 data analysis. We've uh, We've wanted to have a um, a Race Studio 3 update for a little bit, and uh, and today is today we're going to do that. We're going to talk about math channels, lookup tables, lookup tables being a part of math channels, but uh, a little subset of them, and then log sheets. And um, uh, log sheets is something new that we're adding right now. Uh, they will undoubtedly be a, a work in progress as, as you folks uh, use them and give us some ideas. Uh, I will start off right now by saying um, as you use these things make sure if you have any questions um, certainly give us a call but the really the the thing that you should do if you have any um, questions uh, uh, suggestions on anything like this software at aimsportline.com we'll have that email address for you at the end where you can see it uh, putting together those questions and making sure that they are included in the email is the is by far the best way of doing that. So those, those get right straight to Emiliano and, uh, and, he, and he knows there's a little bit of work left to do and maybe uh, some directions that we, uh, we may change because of the, the user feedback. So make sure you always include that, uh, that software at aim-sportline.com. So as we get ready to go, just keep that in mind. Our, uh, our guest today, and uh, he's been with us uh, you know, quite a number of times as, uh, as, as a co-host, been, um, even when he's not co-hosting, he's been here and helping us in the background. Uh, Emiliano Bina is the software, uh, the head of the software team in, in Italy and uh, been around uh, AIM for, for many, many years and uh, just a, a motorsports guy, enjoys this kind of stuff. He's a road vehicle engineer and uh, has, has an engineering background. Uh, loves his sim racing and uh, got a great family. And we talk about uh, the family sports. He's got, we've got a picture of his of his of his kid down there doing some. Uh, uh, his kid's quite a runner, so it's uh, it's, he's he's trying to figure out a data logger for uh, putting on uh, for the for the for the dashes there and the and the cross country stuff that he does. So um, I'm sorry. Perfect. To... Yeah, exactly. So Emiliano, <laughs> thank you for doing this again. I appreciate uh, appreciate all your help uh, all the time, but especially with these webinars. Oh, it, I think it's me who has to say thank you to to all the the attendees and uh, to, to you all at, at uh, Aim Sports for having me here. Uh, you know, I do not like to speak about me <laughs> to say the things I do, but uh, th this is basically a good uh, resume of my my career of my life, uh, my twenty year life uh, in with with the Aim. Uh, he doesn't, enjoyable. Yeah, he doesn't uh, doesn't like to speak. So I'm, uh, maybe next time, even I'll have a, a second slide of, of information about him. No, I won't do that. Yeah, sure. No, no, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna jump right in. Uh, no doubt about that. The um, um, race studio three. I see a question uh, right off the bat. Was uh, have these new functions been released in the new version yet? There will be a. Uh, I haven't checked this morning. Maybe Emiliano can share. But it, it's imminent. It's either it's either out now or it will be out in the next few hours. Race Studio Three. Yeah, production. in the next few hours. Yes. Race Studio Three production is where you will want to go and just and uh, open that up and 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 uh, in the normal update fashion in the upper right corner, um, you'll see the update uh, is available and then everything we're going to talk about today will be available to you uh, mm -hmm. in a number of hours. So. 
And uh, just to answer another question, the, the beta is being used, but at the moment is uh, being used uh, internally to to test uh, to test uh, new features. Uh, uh, I I still don't know if uh, if it's meaningful or, or not to to have it released publicly. Maybe yes. I, seeing uh, seeing this question, maybe yes, and so maybe we will come back uh, having uh, uh, new functions. Uh, into the beta before uh, before having them to the to the release. Yeah, why not? Yeah. We will consider it for for the next uh, next releases. So last uh, the last year or so, beta and production have been uh, absolutely parallel. So uh, I know yeah. whenever I have a problem with a and I look at it in beta, it's it's there in production. So if uh, yeah, they they are they are parallel yeah. as far yeah. as I know. So. Yeah, very very much parallel. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so, let's, uh, let's jump in. We're, we're, what we're going to do here today is um, we're going to talk about the, th the three topics we had, but we're not going to have any slides. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to unshare mine. Emiliano is going to share his screen and we're going to, uh, we're just going to go and, and do this. So let's, uh, I stopped sharing mine. Emiliano, you should be able to share your screen. There you go. Please confirm. And I do, and I do see it. You are up and running. So, give us. Okay. Uh, let's start off with um, uh, the the math channel side, right? And and we, we were talking yeah, about sure. the not just math channels, but the, there's um, you know, what is it in inside the math channels that we were going to talk about? And uh, and I think it was uh, kind of leaning heavily on on some some filtering, but we were going to chat a little bit yeah. about the function of the math channels and units yeah. and some other things to begin with. Get, get us started kind of there. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I'm going to use the, the data from uh, Matt Romanowski that uh, he shared uh, during his last uh, his last webinar. So, so the data is, uh, is already available for download for, for you all. Uh, after the webinar, I very likely will share all the math channels that I'm uh, going to use. So, uh, so for them to be uh, available to everyone. Uh, yeah, just a uh, thing uh, you can immediately notice is that uh, we rearranged a little bit the icons. Uh, some some of them are are changed in position, and uh, we have uh, new functionalities. Uh, so, just. Uh, Few seconds before speaking of the math channels, I'd like to introduce this this icon that will open a track map only a track map only uh, view, and that you can move to with the right click on the tab you can move uh, to to another to, to another window very very easily. Uh, I'm I'm closing it uh, for now, and uh, I added uh, the the possibility to create a new track map starting with the, with this button so you will be moving directly to the creation of a new of a new track map in case you need in case you are you find yourself being on on a track that is not in the in database leave that uh, be... re reopen that one real quick emiliano there was you yep, some, yep, you've yep. done one other little addition there that i have thought uh could be done soon and and you've done it 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 knows the coordinate you're at. It knows where you're at, and it has now yep. populating partially the d the details. And in the past, you yep. used to just have to totally fill in Currently all those boxes. States, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah, yeah, very yeah, nice little touch. Very nice little touch. Yeah, Thank we you. we do some uh, reverse uh, geocoding basing uh, on the uh, on the GPS coordinates of the of the sessions, and uh, we populate these uh, automatically. Yeah, Thank sure. You. I think the most uh, important of them are country and state. For the address, uh, it's not a research field for for the tracks, but uh, country states are very uh, are very very useful. Yep. Very good, thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, let me speak about uh, the math channel. Let me introduce the math channels. Yep. Uh, okay, here it is. I created some uh, some math channels to show uh, things uh, we need for for this uh, for this webinar. Uh, I can start with uh, with filtering, uh, just to introduce uh, several possibilities of filtering we added to the math channels in the last years, and uh, I have uh, had many questions uh, in, 
emails from uh, from customers asking for how these filters work. So I created some uh, just to just to show their their functionalities. I am uh, filtering. I created some uh, some filters. That all of them on the on the same channel. I chose the uh, your rate as uh, as for uh, an example, and uh, I created my channels that show the exponential medial media uh, exponential uh, sorry exponential medium average uh, uh, exponential mobile average and uh, the FIR filter that they are frequency analysis filters, the medium filters asked out by, by customers and uh, the already known rolling average that, it, that uh, was implemented uh, into AIM systems uh, since uh, Ray Studio One. Uh, so let's go uh, creating uh, just to show how these channels can be applied. They can be applied using uh, functions. Uh, so, and this is a big uh, improvement uh, if compared to Ray Studio 2, uh, in which uh, the filters can could be applied only into the channel settings. Here you can define a channel, and in this case is uh, your rate, uh, I called it uh, your rate 20 EMA02, because uh, it's computed at 20 hertz, it's using uh, the EMA function and uh, O2.2 uh, is the value that I, that I inserted here. Uh, all these uh, filtering functions are available uh, using uh, using the functions. Uh, EMA, they are sort of alphabetical, so uh, EMA is uh, right here. If you want to add it, just double click it and uh, with a verify formula, you can, uh, you can, uh, uh, be shown which are the the part of the formula that, that are not uh, that are not working, and they, you're guided into the definition of the complete uh, match channel formula. Uh, the mobile leverage exponential mobile leverage uh, is uh, using uh, for every sample a weighted average of uh, the the previous two samples. And this is the weight of the of the closest sample uh, to the to the time uh, in which in which we compute the value. Uh, this value needs to be from zero to one, and uh, we will show in a second uh, how how it's working. Uh, let me speak a little bit. Let me deviate a little uh, a little second uh, on this part of the of the definition of the match channel. And uh, just to just to state this is the new a new possibility. We we moved from uh, the channel being stepped or no. Uh, the alternative for stepped channel was a linear interpolation, and we added the possibility of a cubic interpolation, as uh, <clears throat> as it's uh, been requested by by many customers. Um, we will show in a second. Uh, how it will affect the computation of, uh, of the match channel. At the moment, uh, we will stay with the linear interpolation that it, it, it is uh, how it was uh, by default uh, before of this, uh, before of this uh, uh, new feature. Uh, so filtering, uh, we were speaking about filtering. They are uh, activated use, uh, using functions. You enter here the name of the channel you want to be you want to be filtering these are further parameters and uh, here you need to define which is uh, the function that is associated to this uh, to this uh, formula and uh, which is the unit in which uh, uh, this formula is outputting uh, uh, data uh, we will clarify this in a further example in uh, some minutes. Uh, okay. I think, I think adding that um, 
that channel function and the unit there at the bottom is a is going to be very mm -hmm. helpful for a lot of people you you, uh, you you're forcing or at least very be, being very clear on what you mm -hmm. want your final uh, final product to be yeah it, and, it, it was not uh, so clear in, uh, before because uh, before you were asked for for selecting a function and a unit but uh, it was not clear uh, if the unit uh, was uh, supposed to be the uh, unit in which you visualize, in which you show the channel, or the unit in which you compute the channel. Uh, no, uh, what it, what uh, this unit is, is the supposed result of this, uh, this formula. Regardless of what values you use, what units you use up above, it'll apply mm -hmm. all that and then and then uh, convert you, and, and output. You are yeah using this uh, this unit. You are telling the match channel engine, I know that uh, this formula outputs these degrees per second. Uh, you, you are stating this to the match channel uh, engine. Perfect. Uh, okay, this is the way you you can apply other other type of uh, types of filtering. In this case, the FIR. Always you choose the. Uh, you choose the name of the channel and you add the parameters for for the F the FIR filter. Uh, in this case, the FIR filters are frequency filters uh, are low pass frequency filters. Uh, you can suppose to you can think uh, at uh, a channel stream at a composi at a composition of uh, a low moving part of a of the stream and the high moving part of the stream. Uh, this kind of filter is taking out the high moving uh, part of the stream, the, uh, the, the, the component with the higher frequencies. Uh, it's normally uh, a filter that is used to take uh, no, I mean, most of the filters, the low pass filters are, are used in the, to take uh, noise out of uh, out of the channel stream, uh, we will see. We will see how in just uh, just few seconds. Uh, other other kind of filters are the rolling average. And these are well known for our all our customers because, uh, uh, as I as I told you, you mean a few seconds ago, they were they were uh, in since Ray Studio One, so it's, uh, it's very well known uh, filtering. Uh, let me sh let me show them. Uh, as, you, as you're finishing up there and getting that ready, go ahead and, and, and begin to get ready, get your screen set mm -hmm. up. Chloe asked a question. Is there, <clears throat> pardon me, is there a description of the function somewhere like derive, uh, the fur, uh, the, the median filter and, and some of the different ones you just talked about? The, we have a document that we've been working on. Emiliano mm -hmm. has put it together. It's in a draft form right now. Uh, we're expecting that we're going to go ahead and finish that up and give you a, a good um, description of the filters and then what the different levels of filtering are and maybe even an example or two of of where you might use that filter because certain filters work best in certain you know data data types right uh, so uh, uh, which I think Emiliano is going to maybe show you here in, in just a moment so uh, there is a document some documentation that is coming but even if you uh, if, if you need something sooner if you just type in FIR filter and and maybe go to Wikipedia or wherever there uh, these are well known filters and the, their strengths and weaknesses are are well known so you could go in uh, outside of aim and find uh, information on these filters. Okay. okay, I saved my my profile, but I saved it with the wrong data. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's fixing it up. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's the... Charlie. Yeah. Charlie has a question. While you're doing that, uh, something uh, Emiliano and I just chatted about a little bit yesterday. Why must we specify a frequency when filtering data that is already sampled? What happens if the sample rates do not match? There is a uh, there is an interpolation of the uh, of the data, and I think we're going to see it here as uh, Emiliano talks about that, and maybe he can give a, a little bit deeper answer to that. Um, yeah, sure. As, as he discusses uh, it, when when you define a, when you define a match channel, you you're saying okay, if you if you come here, you define a match channel. You want this channel to be computed at uh, this frequency, not depending uh, on uh, which is the frequency at which uh, the your rate was uh, was sampled. 
uh, this is the reason uh, the reason for it so you can uh, you can also have uh, you can also have a channel uh, re uh, resampled using uh, using a different one here so in case you have uh, say you have uh, rpm at uh, uh, 10 hertz you can uh, resample the rpm uh, signal at 20 or at 50 in case you need uh, you need it for any other purposes like uh, computing uh, uh, a smooth the uh, scatter plot or for whichever whichever any any other reason this is the reason for which we have we have the possibility to select uh, a frequency while defining uh, a mode channel okay. okay so let me let me show how how the rolling average work uh, so let me use uh, three different colors Okay, you can see here this this is a low path uh, low path filter as the most of uh, as all our all our our filtering. You can see that uh, the blue one is the original uh, yaw rate channel, and uh, while uh, increasing the number of uh, of points considered by by the rolling average five in this one and nine in this second the stronger stronger one, you can see that the the channel, uh, the filter channel is smoothing it out just a just a little bit in in different in different ways, right? So sounds like Emiliano may have froze up there for a second. If you're hearing me, Emiliano, you you may have frozen. Doesn't look like you're moving. Anybody else? Uh, are you hearing me, if, Matt? If you could let me know that uh, we're still going out. Yes, thank you, Tice. Okay, it must be on Emiliano's end. Maybe he'll will. Uh, Emiliano needs to uh, uh, re reset. Yeah, yeah, it is just Emiliano. Let's see if we can just send him a note, have him re restart. Emiliano, you're locked up. There he goes. He should be coming back in just a moment. The um, so we lost his screen. Uh, let's answer. Let's look at a, into a couple of other questions that were here that I, I think I had some ideas on. Chris, you you mentioned uh, I thought we would we would see more of the create track map subject that actually was thrown in real quickly. We didn't we didn't plan on covering that one at all. But um, uh, when you are creating a new track, you can do it ahead of time if you know the start finish line, even on open. Uh, style of tracks, open-ended circuits, as you mentioned, uh, rally, autocross, drift, and um, uh, you can build that ahead of time, or you can build it after the session by clicking on that button. That brings up your data. You can plug in the start finish line and the and the end, and uh, uh, and and um, and have a an open-ended track. So hopefully that answers your question there a little bit. Emiliano, I do see you back. I just need you to reshare your screen, and. Uh, looks like uh, i haven't heard you but it looks like your microphone is on yep well, your microphone's not very good i'm not sure if you've uh, if you're uh, if the problem is a, a web a web based problem or he's still going on there chloe says thanks i think this would be good for channels just to clarify just to clarify the short names not sure what that means. I haven't been keeping up with maybe a previous discussion. Uh, oh, like Driv and uh, and the and the different areas. Yep. Uh, so we, yeah, we'll be putting together that document that um, uh, Emiliano has the document. He's had it made for a couple of months, and uh, we just haven't finished it up from a draft. So uh, this, the, I think this function, this uh, webinar that we're doing here, will will create the. Um, the issue where we start up and, and finish up that document. I'm big on also always adding in some good examples and uh, and showing that that rolling average and what does the what does the bigger number mean versus a littler number. And I think we do that on all of those different filters. So we have a we have a better idea. I do see him back on the screen there, Emiliano, but uh, looks like he's trying to get his uh, computer to, to to maybe show Ray Studio three. Are you? Um, give me a sign, Emiliano, that you're uh, that you're hearing us. Nope, he's uh, he must not even be hearing us. 
Okay, let me then do this. Come back over here. Let me bring up Pre Studio 3. Emiliano's trying everything, I'm sure. I'm going to bring up a test and continue on a little bit about what he was talking about. I, I do hope you can hear me now. Now I can hear you. Yep, we do hear you. And your camera is on. So I, not, I beg your pardon. No, no. Not those things. My that, PC went, went, went out. <laughs> oh, yep, that happens. So what I need you to do, though, is uh, just reshare re your screen, and then we should be, uh, we yeah, should be sure. good. Yeah, um, uh, sure. I started on my backup laptop. <laughs> oh, Always have a backup plan. Always, always, always have a backup plan, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you were in the middle of talking like about. Uh, of you all, I do see. We all see. Happened. We all see your screen, and you were okay. talking. Uh, you were talking about filtering, and I think you'd gotten through a uh, through a couple of them. Yep. We were we were showing how how the rolling average can do uh, their job of filtering out uh, data. Okay. Just to move, okay. Okay, there it is. All the work he had done before has to be redone because he had done, uh, yeah, because <laughs> no he's problem. on a different PC. No, oh, no well. oh, well. Yeah, sure. But uh, you can see that uh, increasing the number of points uh, in the in the filter, they, the, the, the channel become smoother. Uh, let me make more evident using a, diff a different uh, different color here or a different uh, uh, different light size. Okay, the green one is this one is smoother than the than the pink one that is smoother than the uh, one. We can show a similar thing with uh, FIR filtering, maybe with uh, different colors as well. Uh, okay, increasing the number here from moving from uh, two to three and uh, and uh, to four. Uh, even if the scales are not uh, exactly matching, you can see that uh, the channel moving from the blue one to the pink one. The pink one is very close to the blue one because the filtering uh, is uh, pretty mild. Uh, but if you Move to to the red uh, to the red one. You can uh, you can you can see here uh, that the the values values are are being smoother here, mm -hmm. and uh, you you increase the smoothing uh, the low pass filtering for for the for the green one. Uh, the same uh, the same uh, happens with the. Uh, FIR filters. I had I added, no, sorry, not FIR, but DNA that we were showing a few seconds ago. Okay, so this uh, this red one. Okay, you move from the the blue one to the red one, and then to the pink one that are that are more filtered. It's uh, smoother. Uh, so the the O2 number is more it means more power to the filter because it is computing uh, using uh, the values uh, the values of the of the original channel at the same time uh, averaged uh, with uh, the value of the same channel one one time period of it before certainly and you, and, you, and everybody you, you see that there may be a bit of a difference but as he mentioned already you can see the left mm -hmm. column there the, their scale their scale at different mm -hmm. values since Most, you moved uh, to a new, uh, new laptop real uh, quickly so I, I mean many times i get asked the question which are which are the best uh, the best filters or which is the best way to yeah. filter it depends uh, it depends on the on the signal and it depends uh, on uh, on what what you are looking for there's no there's no general rule uh, or if you want to take a general rule try i, I would try the fir filter before but uh, some others can be can perform better in different uh, different ways one of these can be 
this kind of filter that looks kind of weird is applied uh, is applied here. Uh, but uh, this is a very, for example, it was requested us to uh, better understand which uh, when you have a, a channel that is uh, that is a, that has a step behavior the uh, the medium filter is a wonderful filter for edge uh, detection so it's uh, it it depends on what you're looking for and it depends on uh, uh, on on the original uh, values of the channel mm -hmm. we added uh, all of them so um, so customers can can be choosing what uh, what's best for, for them. So again, um, again, do a little bit of research, and you can you can find information everywhere out there. Even before we get our document out, uh, giving you some information on on the different filtering methods, figure out what one is powerful in what different ways, and then just try some different ones. And you're going to see pretty quickly which one is uh, which one mm -hmm. works well. Like a, a, a um, what I call a dirty RPM signal, you know, with a little bit of noise. That rolling average seems to do a uh, just a fantastic job on that one. That's one I use a lot. So there's a uh, different uh, different users will. End up liking different things as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And uh, here I'm going to show what uh, I did it on the RPM. I uh, want to show how the uh, the resample works. Okay. Let me add this. Is let me. With the original, the original channel, <laughs> the original yeah. channel again. They're scaled uh, slightly uh, different, so uh, that you know, what you're seeing there is a little bit off. But yeah, but, uh, but in this case, the scales are different for for a reason. It's probably good at this point. You can see everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, I did. Uh, I did, uh, did some resample. Over over the channel. This is the original the original channel. The RPM originally was a sample at uh, twenty hertz. Okay, and I resampled it at uh, one hundred as a, as I told you before. Uh, this is meant uh, uh, to be shown in a single channel, and uh, on and I'm telling this uh, here for for a specific reason is that. Uh, and the reason is, uh, is to show how the match channel engine uh, works. Let me start from the from the stepped one. So I'm taking the uh, the others away. Okay, here it is. Let me take the linear, the cubic away. Okay, so here I resampled the RPM channel and. Using the stepped flag, I'm referring uh, to, to this one. Okay. Yeah. This is something we haven't chatted about, but there's three new buttons across the top, and he's and, and he's demonstrating yeah, yeah. what each of those does. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now uh, we will see what uh, what stepped does. Okay. Here it is. You see that uh, every channel is uh, stays for the whole for the whole interval at the value it originally had. So. Here is the original value. The original value is here, and uh, in the engine, it will stay at the same value for all, um, until it doesn't uh, it doesn't change. So here it changes and it stays uh, with the uh, with the same value. Here it changes and it stays there. This is how the step at behavior. When you create a match channel mm -hmm. and, and you create any any match channel, when you create it. And uh, even a more a more complicated one, uh, for example, this one. Uh, this one is using uh, is using uh, two other channels. Uh, so, in case you use for this channel a frequency that is not the same of uh, of the other two channels, the other two will be resampled. If you if you select a stepped, they will be resampled in this in this way. So a value will be kept until it does not uh, it doesn't change in the original sample sampling of the channel. So certain so, so certain original channels that might be the best thing for maybe a gear mm -hmm. position or or some other things. But for this RPM, it's really the wrong 
the wrong type of uh, setting in this particular case, uh, possibly. In this particular case, yes, maybe it's what uh, you might be looking for. It depends uh, on what yeah. Uh, yeah. on what you need. Uh, let me show the linear interpolation. Uh, in this case, you see uh, the channel is exactly like it is uh, shown uh, by by default. So by default, to win we apply a linear interpolation here by this is uh, this is our the, the way the uh, race the tree works uh, by, by, by default. just extent. added the additional data points straight between the two blue dots the one with mm -hmm. a longer mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. sample we, rate and it and it, so it kind of matches exactly what yeah. it would look like okay. the, these are the, the true samples and this is the line we imagine the the channel is, uh, is following okay. uh let me introduced the cubic uh, the cubic inter interpolation you can see here that the channel is uh, is being uh, uh, here it is okay you see that where there are the original points the channel is still be is still using the original points but it goes uh, it doesn't go linearly from one point to the other one, your scales are not matching uh, as well. When um, when you go from one point to the other one, you choo you're choosing with this cubing interpolation the uh, a path that is uh, the that has the, the least uh, second derivative. It, it's the smoothest path uh, as, as possible. Uh, that one, that one looks very powerful. That that looks very powerful. Yeah. It, Again, it depends on what they're looking for. If you know what uh, if you know what you need, uh, these uh, this new version of the math channels uh, will allow you into what you need. Uh, we were again, we were asking for it, and uh, uh, once the uh, once uh, we started uh, working on the math channel, uh, we we did it. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Uh, what uh, I, I'm going to show now uh, an application of the math channels. Uh, what I'm looking for now is to uh, show how to compute or how mm, the power of a vehicle can be can be assessed. Uh, we have had uh, many requests for uh, getting back into the Ray Studio Three analysis. The engine analysis the window that we had into the Ray Studio 2 analysis. And uh, I thought uh, to be adding here the math channels that uh, then that allow this. Uh, okay, I named those channel power assessment because uh, why I, I like to say assessment or estimation. I don't know which is the more meaningful uh, term in uh, uh, because this is a, uh, it's I mean it's risky to to define this as a power calculation because mm -hmm. we are not computing the power of the engine of a of a vehicle we are trying to uh, estimate it out of uh, out of data. Uh, let me explain in a few seconds uh, how how I thought uh, this. Could be done, and uh, I yeah just to to introduce it. Uh, what what the vehicle is uh, is is using power for? It, it can be using power for overcoming uh, the aerodynamics, uh, the, the, the aerodynamics uh, resistance for uh, for getting a vehicle the power to accelerate or for getting a vehicle the power to overcome a slope into, into the track. Uh, we are missing a term that can be important uh, in, somehow, and uh, it's the power to overcome the rolling resistance of tires. Uh, we're kind of uh, introducing some uh, something also, also on this, but uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not here. Uh, let, let me show how I did this math formula. Uh, and uh, it will be immediately uh, visible uh, uh, how the new functionalities of the math channels uh, enter, enter this, uh, this explanation. Uh, 
this is the power, uh, the formula that lets you compute the estimate the power to accelerate a vehicle. You need for sure uh, to know the vehicle weight, uh, to know which is the longitudinal acceleration of, uh, of the car, and uh, you need to know the uh, GPS speed, the, the speed of the vehicle. I took the GPS speed as a speed, I took the GPS longitudinal acceleration, and I took uh, uh, this one that is a log sheet, uh, a, a, an item of a, of a log sheet. Uh, we're we're going to talk can about use log them. sheets here in just a moment. Yeah, uh, yep. but how to, to use them into the, into the watch channels. Uh, here where, where you have the <laughs> identifiers, uh, you have all the, all the channels. And when you double click it, uh, the channel name will be added to um to to the formula the same will happen with uh, all the log sheets uh, that uh, we that we we added here uh, in this case uh, i added uh, this vehicle weight uh, log sheet log sheet with uh, its uh, its uh, unit of measure uh, the same i did with, uh, with gps longitudinal acceleration and uh, with the gps speed and uh, uh, important uh, to notice that is that I I'm using the uh, the square brackets, and uh, I'm adding uh, the uh, unit of measure that will work for uh, for this formula. This this formula is uh, being computed uh, computed in metric units, and uh, knowing that uh, I need metric units, I insert them here. So this formula will work uh, also if uh, in the race studio tree, in other views of the race studio tree, you are showing acceleration in other, in other units. And also if you are using, if you are showing speed in other units. So these uh, okay. unit of measure inserted into square brackets uh, will uh, make the job. So it will be, forcing the math channel engine into the conversion of a speed into meters per second before computing uh, the values in output. Uh, being everything in metric, metric units, I know that the result of this formula divided by 1000 will, will have uh, the power expressed in kilowatt. And this is uh, uh, how this formula, this formula works. So whichever, uh, Whichever the, uh, the the units I'm showing this channel with, this formula will be continuously working uh, for uh, for any application. Uh, so this is the way I computed the power for, for the acceleration. And that move. And let's let's move to power for aerodynamics. The formula looks pretty complicated by but uh, it's, it's really simple. 0.5, uh, air density expressed, uh, expressed in metric units that are kilograms per cubic meters. Uh, the front surface of the vehicle, the uh, aerodynamic uh, coefficient Cx, and uh, the, G the speed. Again, I am using the GPS speed to compute it. Uh, the speed enters with uh, cubic power. Uh, this formula is computed in, in uh, metric units, and if I divide it by 1,000, I will get kilowatt for, uh, for power. Uh, the same uh, in the power for overcoming the slope. And uh, again, here, vehicle weight is important. Uh, we need uh, the sign of uh, of the slope angle, and uh, the slope angle uh, here is it's shown in in uh, degrees. If I enter here radius uh, radiant, uh, the math engine will be converting it uh, into radiant without me to be forced into knowing uh, which is the conversion factor. And this is the power I think for for uh, the complete uh, functionality of math of uh, math channels. Uh, 
GP speed again in meters by uh, by second divided by a thousand. Uh, uh, I will get. Uh, so uh, leave that one up there for a second, or leave any okay, of them. Sure. And let's uh, you may, might be heading there, but let's say uh, our American audience or English units audience was going to use this, and they had their vehicle weight in pounds and their speed in in no uh, miles per hour. You leave it just like this. As far as the formula, it will convert everything to that, and then you just yep. change the kilowatt one down below to output as horsepower or, or whatever it is that you wish, right? Yes, absolutely yes. This is the, this formula will be computed in kilowatt, and uh, I did it. Uh, I did it here. Uh, just let me one second, and uh, it will be clarified. Okay. Uh, I added. I computed a channel that is total power. That is. Uh, the sum of the three power, the three channels, uh, okay. uh, named uh, just uh, just a second ago, and uh, I created a, a total power. I, I called it a total power two, and this uh, it's uh, basically the total power <coughs> in which I added the condition. Uh, we show you later uh, why I need it. Uh, the condition is uh, I take the power. <laughs> only when the GPS uh, longitudinal acceleration is uh, greater than 0.1 G and uh, when calculated gear is uh, four. Uh, it will be immediately clarified uh, in, in a second. So if I exit here and uh, I'm adding here power, let me uh, let me show you, okay, this is uh, the total power of, uh, of that. Mets car, so the the world will be will be lucky to know which which is the estimation of uh, the power of Mets car in, uh, in, in kilowatts. It shows in kilowatts, yes. And uh, if you want, uh, so if you want it to be shown in in, uh, in horsepower, just come here and select uh, select horsepower, and uh, this channel that is total power two will be, will be uh, computed. It's it's a zero. Okay. So, of course, it's going to be oh. zero at certain spots because he's filtered out yeah. when it's under deceleration. Yeah. And again, it's not the horsepower that the motor is outputting; it's the ho horsepower that is needed to do what you're doing at that moment, uphill, downhill, mm -hmm. uh, to push the car through that air and accelerate at that rate. So, yeah, you have yeah, to yeah, kind yeah, of think yeah. about your horsepower or your output value in a little bit different way than a dyno sheet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, it is. Uh, okay, so let me close this for for a second. Okay, what uh, what we can do now is try to compute uh, to compute. Okay, this scatter plot is kind of uh, okay. Let me take it out. Remove panel. No remove panel. Okay, this one is, is here. Uh, choose channel for axis. He probably had his other other PC all uh, all set up, and now he's having to redo it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We are running a little okay. short on time, so make sure you get this one done, and then let's get into the log sheets a little bit. Ah, okay, okay, no, no problem. Okay, this is the uh, this is the power curve. Okay, uh, out of the power curve, I can. Uh, it it is negative because when you when you break, it goes uh, it goes negative. Uh, but if I set, I uh, know oh, this is the uh, not you know? yep. can change that because it quickly. is it is another channel okay yep total power total, total power, okay. total power okay. two i think the power and... uh, no showing here it is okay the this is the total power the power total. Curve. this is the acceleration okay uh, yeah it is no action and if you did the total power okay. two, I think you'd have it all the zero under zero filtered out. I think. Yes. Yes. It is. So, basically, basically, I did it. I did it for that. Uh, yeah, that, that gives you, you an idea. Uh, yeah. If yep. uh, if you take note uh, of uh, this, I I I took note of a uh, of a kind of a manual interpolation of the of this curve, and I used the used the points that uh, that I create that I got out of them, create. Uh, to create this, that is, uh, that is the lookup table. Uh, till now, the lookup tables were definable here, and then the, there was uh, there was a button to open uh, to open the, the 
the file as text to be editing it using uh, using a text editor. In this uh, in this release, I added this uh, this possibility to uh, to edit the to edit the power curve and uh, to edit uh, sorry the, the lookup table. And in this uh, in this example, I I applied it for for the power curve, so you can enter a different value and. Uh, you will see this uh, needs to be changed. So I'm, I'm adding, uh, uh, I'm adding uh, a value that is uh, that is all over. So let me let me edit. This is bigger. This is 400 uh, compared to 66. Uh, that, that 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 is the value before. But anyway, this is uh, these are the possibilities of uh, of these uh, lookup tables. Uh, from this table, you can be drag and dropping. Uh, you can select uh, you can select the channels. You can drag and drop to Excel, and uh, vice versa. You can uh, drag and drop from Excel to, to here. And uh, this is uh, another important thing. Uh, I want uh, I want to be. Just for you a second, so I, I go back to the web. Uh, you can see that. I added the two values with uh, two rows with the same value, in, uh, with the same output value. It it's uh, it's needed uh, to make uh, this this curve saturate. Otherwise, uh, if I uh, if I leave only the uh, the dropping part and not the horizontal part, uh, the the math uh, channel engine will continuously interpolate. So in case uh, you want to compute a value at uh, at a point of uh, say here is the four thousand and three hundred. If you want uh, to compute a value of the uh, of the lookup table when uh, when the input channel is uh, four thousand, here it goes to zero because uh, because the the interpolation will uh, will get you a, a zero. If you do not uh, if you do not add these two values with the same value, the interpolation will uh, will continue. So uh, you risk to go uh, to very unlikely odd. values. Yeah, unlikely. Or, or unlikely or odd. I do that uh, with custom sensors as well. I always end with a with a couple of the same values, so you custom sensors end up with the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do the same thing with uh, with the two with the three D tables, which, uh, uh, which you can uh, can add. Uh, you can build your your own uh, your own table. Uh, also, here you can drag and drop uh, to or from uh, Excel. Choose the function uh, for the input channel. Choose the function for the secondary input channel, and choose the function for the output. And uh, this will be this will be done. The selection of, uh, of the functions uh, is uh, is done. Uh, Again, with the usual uh, interface that we have had, we have had uh, in the functions of selectability into the analysis uh, software. Um, what else? Uh, what else can I say? The selection of the function is the same that you get here when you want to uh, choose uh, here. You want to select a, a so. A, a turbo RPM channel. If you create a channel like this, it will be, uh, for example, it can be, it can be, it will be resampling at at, at 100 hertz. Uh, any channel you have, I mean the first one, uh, the first channel it finds with a turbo RPM uh, function. And in case you have two uh, turbo RPM functions, when you uh, when you go uh, do this. Uh, I need to choose the function with uh, high speed to go to the RPM again. Okay. Uh, when you when you try to apply this uh, this channel, in this case, it should tell me uh, that is not able to identify a to RPM channel. In case you have one, it will identify it by by default. In case you have two uh, channels of uh, turbo uh, with the turbo RPM. Uh, uh, function, it would be prompting uh, here you a warning, which uh, 
clicking which you can select which is the channel you want to use it with. Uh, Session errors are very powerful. Try to help you uh, to help you understand, you know, what what the problems are. We only have a couple yep. minutes left. I think we should get into log sheets a little bit more and talk yeah, a little sure. bit about, um, you know, how they are, what they look like, how you set them up. Uh, again, okay. we, only, we only have maybe five or ten minutes, but okay, no problem. Uh, the functionality is activated using this button. Uh, we kind of group them into several sections. So the we have a general information uh, section. Uh, I mean, let me let me move uh, to to the weather weather ones. I mean, the log sheets have uh, always been there because uh, the uh, the weather the weather information has always been recorded into into log sheets uh, using the Ray Studio Three software. It, it's only that it was not uh, uh, clearly visible to to anyone. Uh, just click uh, click a value. Uh, in this case, you can get uh, you can get the values from uh, from the server. You can decide to uh, up to, to a year that. back from the uh, automatically from back. the server at that location. Yeah. Yep. 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 Up to a year back. Uh, if you, I mean, these are values that are to be considered as uh, pertinent to this specific section uh, session. Uh, if you open another session, it will be shown here. And uh, this value uh, for this session, for the wind direction, uh, it has been 169 degrees. And for another session, it could be 180, it could be uh, 90, another value. So uh, this is allowing you, in case you add, uh, you populate, you populate these values, is it is allowing you uh, into the match channels when you refer to a log to a log sheet value, it will be taking the value that is specific for for the session. In case you uh, you still have to populate it, the match channel will not be computed, and it will it will, it will be computed with uh, with a yellow ticket here. And if you go on the yellow ticket with the mouse, it will be telling you. There is no value for this uh, uh, for this uh, for this item. So you come here, you you add the value, and uh, you uh, you get the match channel computed. Uh, I I was saying that log sheets have been grouped. One is the general information, and uh, uh, as uh, as uh, it, it's it's shown here, not all of them. Uh, are to be considered as a numeric values. Uh, here, uh, you can have uh, um, you can have also also text. You can add the comments to to it, and uh, the the value you you enter is uh, is shown here. Uh, they are grouped as uh, general information, weather, engine information, model type, uh, IDs, uh, map used, uh, so on. Uh, dimensions and the weights of the vehicle, uh, fuel usage, uh, gearings. Uh, you can enter here the gearings uh, of your of your car of your of your vehicle. And if you come in, come into settings and you select in the settings, you can customize which are which are the fields uh, that are shown. So in in this case, in case of gearings. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm using now a six gears, uh, six gears uh, gearbox. You, I can move to four, and I can uh, define, for for example, for gearings, uh, if I want to use an input uh, a reduction factor for uh, from the uh, from the engine to the primary uh, axle of the of the gearbox. Uh, just for example, a 100 cc go kart. Uh, this one will be uh, it's it's supposed to be used with uh, with uh, this hide so to be to be disabled because uh, in a go kart the the uh, the main rpm axle uh, the main engine axle is the same on which uh, the the first gear is uh, 
is placed. So you can uh, truly define uh, which is uh, which is your gearbox, and according to what you choose, the drawing will be will be uh, will be modified to be to be correct. Uh, fueling, you can show if you want um, use, uh, if you want to use mass volume, uh, if you should if you want to show start finish. Each one of these uh, of the fields that you can get here, you can uh, see here, can be enabled or, or disabled. If you, as I told you, for dimension weights uh, again and uh, for engine as well. If in general you choose uh, a different tire kind of a uh, vehicle uh, here, uh, we represent the vehicle with draw. And you will getting you will be getting also a dedicated uh, setup log sheets in which you can enter uh, start and finish pressure of the of the of the of your wheels. You can uh, you can be uh, selecting uh, tire feet, uh, tire surface temperature at the finish. You can I mean there there's truly a lot of uh, uh, the peak uh, of uh, suspension dampers in compression and in the rebound. And see, it's, see it's, Chloe, it's, Chloe, we didn't we didn't forget about our our motorcycle racers, so that's good. No, it, it would be <laughs> available for motorcycle, for for cars, for, cars, for cars. All, 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 yeah, for all uh, all kinds of vehicles. Uh, what uh, what else can be said? Uh, these these fields are at the moment defined by us. Uh, in case you need some something more, just let us know and we will be adding them. Uh, we did it uh, just to take the thing uh, more, more under control at, at the beginning. Uh, very likely in the future, we will uh, let you insert uh, your own uh, your own fields so to be used with, uh, uh, with the map chunk. Uh, and, and, and you mentioned that uh, that it, it is a, a work in progress. And so if mm -hmm. if as everybody's using them, make sure that you, uh, you email um, any questions or comments or things you may want to see changed, make sure you email us and, and talk about it. The last thing I'd like to wrap up, we are going a little bit long, but uh, I, you, you, you showed it, but you didn't talk about it in the math channels. Let's say mm -hmm. you had that motorcycle um gearing you know fourth gear was a certain gear ratio in your in your uh um, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. log sheets how do you enter those i i seen you had done it but you didn't spell it out specifically so if you go to open up a math uh, yes. channel you can see how you pull yes, stuff from the log sheet i i did it i did it because i wanted to identify uh yeah, after i wanted you. to create yeah. a, i wanted to create the power the power curve of a uh, of matt's car so i took uh, I took uh, all the points. Uh, uh, I think this, this should be fifth. Okay, I I saw that I had uh, I had uh, two long straight lines, uh, uh, three with this one, uh, made with uh, with the fourth gear, and so I created the power curve uh, using uh, uh, this one. Up to that is showing GG here. Here it is. This is this is the total power to only in gear four. So to have a more clear uh, identifying of the of the point, I tried to uh, I took note on on a, on a piece of paper of the values which uh, the power expresses, and uh, I used those values to create the uh, the lookup table you can you can see here. So these values came uh, from uh, from that power curve, and uh, why just uh, using the uh, back to the tag business plot? I have a channel that I named the total power from from curve. Let me take out the other. Uh, so if I create it here. This is this is the power that uh, was uh, computed uh, out of uh, out of the curve that I that I inserted. Uh, this uh, I think the power of this 
and you have to make it customized with a bit to one hundred and fifty variables. Yeah. Okay. This this is coming from uh, from the power, the power curve. I mean, it's a little bit more than uh, that was the estimation that comes from from the power, but it depends on the number I inserted into the curve. If you so go, just gives you, uh, gives you, you a couple of different options. You can do it either from the from the table or from a, a true calculation. So you mm -hmm. may have a dyno sheet or something, and you want to see how much is being used. Uh, you can plug that yeah, into yeah, a table it, as well. It, 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 yeah, in case in case you have a dyno sheet, you can uh, you can uh, enter your, that in, your into power a table. curve and um, have it uh, have it uh, mm -hmm. calculated yeah. using the chart. Or you um, can calculate it from raw data without that either either one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, no no problem. I'd like you to open uh, up a math channel that had a value from the log sheet. Uh, you had the dollar signs, and I just wanted to to show people where you can actually okay. access the log sheets yeah, from yeah, yeah. math sure, channels sure, sure. as well. Uh, total power as we kind of problem. close up. Ah, OK. Uh, no, th this is one uh, that's, yeah, that's not one. which uh, you use the lookup table. Look table. Here you you enter the name of the table. That is uh, basically the name of the file that you are creating. Uh, if you want to use the, another one, that's like here, new table. Uh, and it just has okay. the LUT prefix. We'll, we'll draw it directly to that. Here it is, and uh, here it will be showing. I'm using the new table that is a 3D lookup table, so it needs uh, uh, one channel for the first uh, as the first input and one channel as the second, and it will compute a, a, an output for you. So <coughs> let's uh, jump back to the power curve uh, as it was. Uh, verify formula. It needs uh, it needs a channel. Yep, yep, exactly. And it will be using the RPM channel that is uh, right here, RPM channel. And then how do we integrate uh, in data from the log sheets into a math channel? Do you have a, an example of using some log sheet data? Oh, in a yes, math I have. I have. And uh, this is the one. Uh, so the power for aerodynamics. So the standard error density is uh, uh, it's pre-calculated. It's uh, 1.23 kilograms per cubic, cubic, cubic meter. Uh, this is the the vehicle front surface that has uh, that features the default value. So even if I didn't uh, enter the, the front surface uh, for this data, uh, it gets by default. Uh, it gets with a with a default uh, kind of works. Uh, the same for for C X. So you, uh, I I mean the the easiest way to in, to enter a log sheet is just to uh, let me let me define. A new channel so we can be quicker in that. Uh, if I want to use uh, the, the volume of the fuel at the at the finish, finish time of the run. Just double, double click and it adds it up in there. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, if you know the exact name of the log sheet item, uh, you can uh, use the two dollar sign at the, at the beginning and uh, at the end of a name. And these uh, allows the match channel engine to identify uh, the log sheet item you want to use for that session. So this is finish volume, uh, finish volume, fuel, finish fuel volume and uh, start fuel volume. And these values will be coming uh, by the values you enter per every session you log. And that, that math will done, will, will the math be then, Will log sheets be able to be populated from math channels or from the gathered data? Are you populating log sheets in that direction yet? Uh, at the moment, yes, we do. We do something, but uh, it will be, yeah, will be improved. Okay. It happens. Uh, it happens. For example, for uh, for the junior directors, in which we use logbook uh, for uh, yeah. a long while, and uh, most of them are automatically populated out of uh, out of data. Okay, so, when that's, you import data. so that's that's something that's coming as we as you continue to improve them. And the other yeah, question yeah. that I the other question that I did see is is let's say you just you did a session and then you were going to go out and do another session with the same car, the same serial number from the from the aim device. Does it pre-populate? Does it pull the values from the session before so you don't have to repopulate every every time? Uh, at the moment, uh, at the moment, no. Uh, internally, data are, are ready, and uh, 
this uh, this functionality will be added soon, a few days. That's what I. That's what I remember you telling me that that was something that was uh, was mm -hmm. getting close to being to being available for. Yeah. So for those of you that are doing that, it, yes, it's not going to pre-populate your next test yeah. and your next test, but that will be coming soon. So always update your Ray Studio three as uh, as it's being yeah. updated. Unfortunately, I had in the recent weeks to to find a couple of bugs that uh, were very heavy uh, with the server side uh, yeah. cooperation. Uh, we had a race with three crashing uh, during some uh, yeah. some server overload, uh, but we found them and found uh, the fixes will be in the in the next uh, in the next release. And uh, due to this, I had to invest some time. Uh, Yes, very, very happy that you're here with us today because we were we were thinking we were not going to be able to uh, have Emiliano. He was so busy solving that problem that I was uh, I, we were all a little bit concerned. But here he is, so that's good. Okay, so then the um, um, I think we're uh, we're just about out of time. Is there anything you'd like to kind of add as you, as you kind of close your way out and then uh, unshare your screen? Uh, no, uh, I, I have some, uh, some ideas about, uh, I will go, I, I will take them for, for the next webinar. <laughs> yeah. Never have enough much time. Channel use. Never have enough time. And then we had our little problem there, which kind of hurt you for, we lost about a, a few minutes there as well. So yeah, I'm sorry for that. No, 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 my, no problem. Those things happen. Those things happen. My PC, my, my, my PC is stuck on, uh, 7, 23 PM. Where the, where the and problem, still when the stuck. problem happened. <laughs> Oops. I don't know. Oops. Okay, so everybody, um, if you would unshare that, uh, Emiliano, that would be great. And uh, the um, and I will share my screen and let's let's chat a little bit on our way out. The again the the especially the log sheets, they're a work in progress. Uh, there are there's a lot that you can do with them now. They're, they're a good percentage of them is uh is done and ready to go obviously start playing with them you again you're going to see ray studio 3 have an available update uh in the next 12 14 hours something what you know in the next few hours uh that is when all this will be available to you to go ahead and take a look at that along with the new enhanced lookup tables where you get the the graphs and you can cut and paste uh, drag and drop you know, from uh, uh from Excel uh, instead of having to hand enter all the information. So those will be available to you as well. And all the new filters that uh, Emiliano talked about today inside the math channel. So make sure you take a look for that uh, here soon. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. Perfect. Sorry, we didn't get to as many of the questions as we'd like to, but we got a little bit behind. The um, uh, this one will be up uh, we, a lot of technical details. So this, this is gonna be one of those if you're here live that you'll probably want to go back and, uh, and take a little bit of a look at uh, uh, in more detail and, and review some of what we talked about. Uh, but when it when it is said and done, it'll be up on uh, up on YouTube just as fast as we can get it there today. And then uh, uh, of course we're out there every uh, every weekend doing our custom customer support thing. Make sure you t take a look for uh, our fellas that are out there at the track and um, uh, working hard. Uh, if, if you have another question, make sure you give us a call at 800-718-9090. Uh, make sure you uh, get, we can get you the answers that you need. So uh, next webinar. Next webinar is uh, we're going to have uh, a, a little bit of a different talk. The, uh, we're going to have Ivan Stewart. He's an off-road racing legend. Uh, some of you may or may not have heard of Ivan. Um, uh, Ivan was a, a, an off-road racer started in 1973 and raced through the 2000 season. Uh, a little, it still involved deeply with Toyota. He was a factory Toyota guy. What's going to be interesting to talk with Ivan about is starting when they were basically unmodified Volkswagens, uh, you know, racing out in the desert uh, up through some tube frames and they got better and better. And then he transitioned into uh, being a, a factory uh, Toyota driver where they really, really focused on the, on the data side. And it's going to be interesting to hear uh, uh, the, the change in his career as they went from no data to data. He won't technically understand uh, or be able to you know, talk, speak to a lot of the very technical things, but as a driver, what, uh, how did that change his uh, approach and, and some of the stuff that they did? So it'll be very, very good to, uh, to have uh, 
Ivan Ivan Stewart on joining us. Uh, it'll it'll be a fun. There are a couple of times in uh, in uh, uh, in me putting these webinars together that maybe I do some for uh, some of my own pleasure as well, and this may be one of those. So uh, <laughs> I uh, raced uh, in off road for a long time, and uh, and he was somebody that was out there uh, winning it all, uh, all the time. So it, this that'll be a fun one. The um, contact information we talked about. Um, the lookup tables were, uh, I'm sorry, log, log sheets were, were a work in progress. There's the uh, software at aimsportline.com email address. Please try these when you get the new update of Race Studio 3. Give them a shot. Try some different things and, uh, and, and give uh, Emiliano and the software team uh, feedback about those. If, uh, if you want, you can CC me as well. I'll stay on top of it uh, as well. And, uh, and, and we'll continue to make these uh, better and better. And while you're doing it, make sure you look at the, the lookup tables and, and try those out and, and some of the different math channels and the, those three filters across the top. Try out some different things. And Emiliano and I will work on that uh, on that document that uh, explains uh, uh, in depth, you know, a little bit more about uh, each of the different math channel functions. So thanks, everybody, for coming. I appreciate it. Emiliano, you'd like to share anything as we're uh, kind of closing this one out? Uh, I'd like to to share the promise that uh, for the next uh, time I will be here, the document will be will be ready. The document uh, explaining the, the map channels and, uh, and and all the all the map channel functions and all the the log sheets that as they have been uh, thought about. Yeah. So Such I, a... I'd like to share a big thank you to to you all again. Uh, definitely, you ruled in, in customer support and. This webinar is a good example. Yeah, the, all the folks that come here and uh, and watch later on YouTube, we appreciate you. Uh, appreciate all the the instant feedback from the folks that are here, uh, but uh, a lot of it could not get done without uh, Emiliano and his team working so hard on uh, on, on updates like this. So, uh, but he works off of, of feedback from the users. So, you know, he's pretty he's pretty good about figuring out some some different things, but it, we always get better end product when we get the feedback from the users. So continue to do that. I appreciate that. Thanks everybody for coming. And uh, we will see you in a in about a month or so, the last Tuesday of the month uh, in in April. Looking forward to it. Talk to you guys soon. Bye bye.